Good morning, beloved. <clears throat> this is, uh, poor Job this week kind of got skipped a few times, huh? <laughs> All these little feasts and memorials coming up. Uh, so today we have, <clears throat> we have um, our gospel from Matthew and then the first reading from Exodus. And of course, these are some of the readings that the church pulls together to show us uh, some of the evidence we have from Scripture that there are angels involved in our, in our lives in many different ways. And we, we learn from that, from the Scriptures. We learn from uh, their different examples. We learn from people who God has blessed with a, a spiritual gift to see in the spirit realm. Uh, even prof, you know, prophets in the Old Testament, there's prophets today who can kind of see in the spirit realm that God blesses them with this gift and speaks to them in certain ways in order to then pass on or hand on that message to us so we can be prepared for things. So these gifts are still active through the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Or nothing stops or, or ends. <clears throat> uh, we see in the gospel today we have a um, every one of us has an angel who looks upon the face of our Heavenly Father. So we call this, the church calls this guardian angels or protection angels. There's been another person who's written about angels, just called them personal angels. You know, because sometimes we wonder, well, what are you really, where is this protection now? Why are these bad things happening to me, right? <laughs> so we can kind of ask that question or reflect, you know, what are our guardian angels and protection angels really protecting us from? Because sometimes we get beat up pretty bad in life, huh? <clears throat> and I, I think if we per just reflect on it a little bit, I'll let you take it from here after, after this, but you know, if the highest and most important thing in our life is salvation, you know, so probably they're protecting that first and foremost, protecting us along the way of salvation. Um, but they don't obviously take over our free will if we start going astray, just like parents don't take over the, the child's free will when they go astray. Sometimes you... You warn them, you prepare them, you instruct them, you teach them, you try to form them, and they still do what they're going to do, you know. And we're the same way with God and our, and our protection, our guardian angels as well. One of the ways they do work in our lives, which we touched on on Wednesday, what is, um, is that they are constantly speaking God's truth into our life, you know. The, one of the things that we face all day long, we're bombarded in different ways all day long, if we're seeking God, is we're faced with lies and deceptions. Uh, all day long are spoken into our lives, whether it's institutional or through the TV or through the radio or through other people in our lives. Sometimes our own insecurities kick in. We all have different insecurities and weaknesses. And uh, the angels are very smart. Remember, we saw that Satan roams around the world, prowls for the destruction of souls, and he's watching everyone. All of the, the fallen angels are watching everyone, and they're like super smart, so they remember everything about us. You know, <clears throat> Remember, all God had to do was, have you seen my servant Job? Satan knew exactly who Job was. Of all the people on the whole earth, right? So, so, we have, so we have protection angels, guardian angels, but these also angels that are trying to destroy us, or the fallen angels trying to destroy us. So they, they see and know our weaknesses and try to tap into those. They know when we're having a rough day, a down day, and then they'll try to speak lies and deception or shame or false guilt into our life to tap into the weaknesses and insecurities and help us to go off in that, in that wrong way. Uh, the guardian angels are there to continue then to counter those false, those lies with that deception, that shame or false guilt that's spoken into our life to remind us, no, God loves you. God's not mad at you. God will never leave you or abandon you. <laughs> and to continue to remind you, remind you of God's truth. Imagine Adam and Eve at the very beginning, you know. They had guardian angels, huh? They had guardian angels. They had the fallen angel also, Satan, speaking to them. The lies, you can imagine they must have also had the guardian angels there speaking truth, you know. Here's Satan. You can touch it, it's okay. And then, right, it's the two angels on the shoulder. <laughs> it's a cartoon, but it's part of reality. They're always reminding, no, don't touch that. That's not good for you. Remember God said, here's what God's law was. Here's his commands. Here's what he laid out. What is good, what is good for you? It's like a big old wrestling match, you know, <laughs> for our hearts. Remember, they're fighting for our hearts. And we have to fight for our hearts. So our guardian angels, our personal angels, are there also to build us up and help train us to fight for our own hearts, you know. Uh, we have to be childlike. That means that most, in this sense, it means easily movable by our guardian angel, by God's instructions, not a grown, stubborn adult, right? 
There's, there is a, usually a point in our lives when we get so to a certain age when we're just set in our ways, huh? But children are not necessarily set in their ways. They can be stubborn, but they're also in some ways still uh, formable, movable, changeable. They're like sponges who are always take in new instruction, you know. Sometimes we, so that's the danger. We, want, we don't want to get so old. We get so set in our ways. We're not open to new instructions from the Lord or from, and from the Lord through our guardian angels. We see in the first reading, Exodus, God sends an angel to lead, to guard, to protect them, uh, to protect the whole company of his people. You know, so it's not just personal angels for each one of us, but there's angels who have jobs to guard a whole community to guard a whole city, to guard a whole nation. This is what Paul is referring to when he talks about thrones and principalities and different powers. There's angels in, guard of, in charge of not just a person, but angels in charge of a, a people, angels in charge of a whole territory. You know? This is all mapped out like, like war. <laughs> you know, like war. Um, there's probably at least one angel standing outside the door here guarding us in charge of our parish uh, for protection and guarding and to help lead us as a community according to God's will, right? All these things are at play in our life. St. Padre Pio, we just celebrated his feast day on the 23rd, um, September 23rd. He was one of the ones who was able to see guardian angels, to speak to them. He saw his guardian angel ever since he was a child, never spoke of it because he thought, well, can't everybody do this? Right? It was just... Uh, uh, something he always could do, so he didn't know there was anything special or different until he realized some people started, he, started, he brought up one time, they said, what are you talking about? <laughs> but he would have conversations with the guardian angel even as a little child, four or five years old. But he also saw demons. And there was a time he got attacked by demons when he was an adult and he looked at his guardian angel and cried for help and it didn't help him. After he said, why didn't you help me? Aren't you my guardian angel, protection angel? And this angel cried and said, I couldn't. God wouldn't let me at that, this time. Who knows why, huh? I guess that beating wasn't going to destroy his salvation, but he needed it for his humility is what he said later on. Padre Pio is famous. He's the one also he would say, name your guardian angel. If you haven't already, if you ask your guardian angel in prayer, what's your name? Sometimes a name will spring up. A light bulb will turn on, an intuition will come, a name will come. That's your guardian angel speaking that his name, his or her name to you. And if they don't answer, then that means you give them a name. That's what Pio said. If they don't tell you the name, then you give them a name. And then he said, send your, if you're in trouble or need help or need prayer, send your angel to me. And then I'll know to pray for you. And so he, he could see different angels coming to him from different people, and he was, he was informed in the spiritual realm in that way. And then he would pray for different people in that way, or send his angels out to help people. There's a whole other world out there we don't even, can't even see right now, you guys, you know? But this is part of our faith. It's a part of the doctrine of our faith, part of God's help to lead us on the way of salvation.